Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and in this video I'm going to show you one way that you can stain your concrete. So as you can see behind me here I have this fireplace that I just got done building. I did all of this veneer stone on the back and right here I have the uh, concrete bench. I poured the concrete, I made some molds and I just left it gray at the time that I poured it because I knew that I was either gonna come back and stain it or paint it. So I found some of this bare premium paint. It's right here. It's a uh, semi-transparent decorative bare paint, um, decorative concrete stain. And I'm gonna show you guys what I do to prepare the concrete. And I'm also gonna show you um, what the finished product looks like when it's applied. This says it's semi-transparent. They also do have a full um, color concrete stain or paint, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't painting the concrete. I didn't want to have too much of like a thick yeah. latex look on it. it. So um, I'll show you guys what this semi-transparent bare premium concrete stain looks like. And um, we'll just go from there. But first we got to actually prepare the concrete and I'll show you what I did to prepare my concrete. So here's a little bit uh, closer look of the concrete bench that I'm gonna be eventually staining. You can see right here, um, I've already kind of ground some of this down. It looks a lot smoother. This was the finish that I had after I poured the concrete and I brushed it. So it has these uh, brush strokes. But what I wanna do is I wanna get down to this smooth look. The corners are a little bit beveled. I cleaned up the front, uh, but I, what I really gotta do is prepare the rest of it. I did all this around the edges before I laid down my stone, knowing that I wouldn't be able to get the grinder up there. So I ground all the way around the edges. Now I just gotta do um, the body of the bench. What I ground it down with, and what I'm gonna be finishing with, is this uh, four and a half inch bit. This is the concrete grinding bit. You can buy these for about 30 or 40 bucks, I think at your box stores. Uh, but I've had this for years. I've used it for a lot of different projects. There's been some projects where I poured a old slab next to a new slab and there's a little bit of uneven surface. This thing is a work hog. It ground it all the way down. So um, you can get one of these at the store. I use it on a lot of these smaller jobs, um, but this one's lasting me a long time. Attaches right to your four and a half inch grinder. Uh, but you can see here, this is all rough and I'll come back after and it will look more like this. And then the concrete will be open and ready to accept the stain. One of the reasons that it's very important to prepare this concrete first, especially if you're working with old concrete or concrete that you've been using, uh, might have other stains or oils on it, is you really gotta clean it up and make sure that it's 100% fresh, has a fresh surface. Um, this is brand new concrete, it's never had anything else on it. So I'm just gonna kinda grind it down really just to get the surface texture that I want. And it also does open up the pores of the concrete again. But um, even on the bare paint, it says that you should be using an etcher. So there is an etching um, chemical pound, uh, compound that you can use on the concrete, like in your garage or a surface that you wanna prepare. The etcher actually kind of eats away at that top surface and opens up a fresh layer of concrete so that when you put the stain or the paint on it, it'll bond and adhere a lot better. So in this one, I'm just really grinding it down and sanding it. Um, but if you're doing this in your garage or you're doing it on some other type of surface that's been around for a while and been exposed to the elements um, or had some type of uh, grease paint or anything on it, you definitely want to use that etcher. It'll um, definitely pay off in the end and make sure that this stuff goes on the way that you want it to and that it will last. So let's clean this up and get it ready. Okay, now we got that done, super messy. Definitely wear uh, breathing protection if you're gonna be sanding concrete, it makes a huge mess. You can see it behind me here and I uh, got dust all over me. But uh, we'll hose it all down and we gotta let it dry for at least a day. We don't want any moisture in it before we put the stain on. So I'll hose it down right now, we'll get a good look at the surface. I'm kinda going for a rough look. I just want it to be a lot smoother than when I um, finished the concrete and I did a brush. It left a really heavy, uh, too rough to be sitting on and stuff. So this just grinds it down, makes it a little bit smoother and it also gives it a little bit more of a uniform look. So we'll wash it off and let it dry for at least 24 hours. Wow. 
You can see already how much more uniform this looks. It actually opens it all up. And now it looks nice and smooth. And that's that look that I was going for. Just something that would look a, bit, a little bit more uniform and even. The edges are done smooth. Put a little bit of a bevel there. This is just a really quick rough grind and it just opens up the concrete so nice. It's gonna look really cool once we get the stain on there. So this is the stuff that I'll be using. The bare semi-transparent decorative concrete stain it says it's for indoor and outdoor use. See all the instructions here on the back it talks about having the surface clean. They do recommend using that etcher, but they tell you do not thin it and you need to be at least 50 to 90 degrees, which out here in Vegas, it's not a problem. Should be dry in 24 hours. Some of the expected coverage, dry time one hour to touch, four hours for recoat. You can clean up with water and then just make sure it doesn't freeze. So once I actually opened up the can, I could tell right away that this looked very watery, which I get why they say you do not want to thin it. But once you dip the brush in, you can definitely see this is very, very watery. So you would not want to add anything to this. I was hoping it'd be a little bit thicker, but um, we'll go ahead and see how this looks on the concrete. All right, I can tell right away that this is probably gonna have a little bit too much red in it. Unless this stuff dries a little differently, um, it's probably gonna be too red, but I can see how the coverage is and it is semi-transparent. You can see through on some of the areas where it's a little bit thinner. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a watercolor. If you've ever painted with watercolors and you see where some areas are a little bit thicker than others, but overall you can see through it, this is exactly like that. What do you think? Good. What's this? What's it? It's paint. I don't want paint. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. So when I was painting the front edge, I used a little piece of scrap cardboard here just to kind of put in between the stone and the concrete to help keep some of that paint from either dripping down or when I'm using the brush and getting it on the stone. Do not want to get it on that stone, it will stain it. And I started to go all the way around with this and it was already drying and I could see right away that this was just gonna be way too red. There was a lot of inconsistency in the tones and you can see on the back right here, I got some spl uh, splatter or something on there. I was just going a little crazy, but I don't think this is gonna work. It's gonna be way too red and almost too bright. Well, that about has it for this stain and this part of the project. I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board because um, as good as this product is and as true as the color is, um, it's not gonna work for this fireplace. So now I gotta go back and look at maybe grinding this down or removing it. Um, they have some fully transparent, or I'm sorry, um, full coverage paint and stains for concrete. Um, I really wanna try to stay away. One minute, buddy. Um, I really want to stay away from that painted look. Um, so I'm going to find something that hopefully can go over this. Um, but because of how good this stain is, and um, it has a cool look, it's just not going to be good for this fireplace. It's going to be tough to remove. So, um, you know, it's a learning experience, but that's one of the reasons I wanted to make the video. Um, I'd probably use this on a driveway or some type of large surface, but you obviously have to be really careful if you get any type of splash or coverage. So tape up your... Um, areas that you don't want to get any stain or paint on for sure it is in it even though it's water-based you can clean with water once it's on a surface like this like concrete some that's porous there's no getting it out it's just gonna stay so I'm gonna probably have to replace that stone also um, anyways I'll show you guys another video of whatever I decide to do on the surface and maybe show you guys how well it covers or how easy this is to cover or remove but until then I'll see you on the next build also, real quick, make sure you click on the video here. I'll attach it. I'm going to put a video up about what I did to fix it and what I decided to go with. So click on the video here at the end. I'll attach it once it's made.